Yes. Leg 31, Cartmel to Carlisle. First thing to say is look at the sky. The Lord has once again shone his light upon walking the courses. We've got an absolutely gorgeous day. And I think the weather is set fair the next couple of days as well, which is wonderful. Uh, the surroundings are absolutely gorgeous, as you will see. And I have company today, and very distinguished company, in two respects. I have Gary Middlebrook with me, uh, owner, breeder, uh, um, trustee of racing welfare, member of the Jockey Club, uh, former owner of Reverence, champion sprinter in this country, trained by Eric Alston, formerly trained, I believe, by Willie Haggis, who I think, I think I'm right in saying, thought he was a bit too slow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Gary's just called me a bugger. It's not very really nice. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> uh, so it's great to have Gary here. And I've also got, it's, it's rather splendid. I had a Cheltenham winner walking with me last week in the form of Simon Sherwood. And I've got a Cheltenham wa winner walking with me this week. Now, probably not quite as many, well, maybe I'm wrong, would recognise Riddy Goshen, who rode Earth Mover to win the Fox Hunters. I'm trying to undo the gate at the same time as speak. The Fox Hunters in 2004 on Earth Mover has risen 18 winners under rules, 120 or so in point to points. And having related all that, I suspect that both of them are going to be very careful about what they say to me for the rest of the afternoon because now they'll know I've got a memory. Um, uh, but it's great to have them along. And we've also got really two uh, Dalmatians who are now off the lead. We had a slightly tricky time half a mile back when we were walking on the side of a rather busy road and these Dalmatians had less road sense than than, than your, your average rabbit. Um, uh, anyway, we've managed, thanks to the Lakeside Hotel on the banks of Windermere, thank you to them, to get a couple of makeshift leads made of rope, so, uh, so that's all good. Anyway, we're making cracking good progress. We're just coming out to a village called Finsthwaite, a pretty old church here, Finsthwaite Parish Church. Probably right about this time. They'll be coming. Actually, no, they won't be coming out now. It's after lunch. Um, uh, anyway, we've got about another six or seven miles to do today. Uh, so walk on. So we have arrived on the banks of Lake Windermere, the length of which, give or take a couple of hundred yards from the edge of it, I will walk over the course of today and tomorrow. And it is absolutely beautiful and rather like last week. We're seeing it on a completely stunning day. The paddle steam has just gone past. You may be able to just see it in the distance there between the trees, possibly not. Uh, but it is just gorgeous. And I've said it before a million times, but how lucky am I to be spending my year walking in countryside like this? Late afternoon, about five o'clock, sun's starting to go down in the west. This side of the lake is now in shade, but gorgeous light on the other side. Rather swanky hotel over there that could have been putting Minty and I up tonight, but isn't. And a rather lovely sailing boat or two. And the Windermere steamer over there, looking all the way down to the far end of the lake from whence we came. Uh, we were just saying, looks like we've been in view of that hotel for quite a while, but puts into context when you see how far the end of the lake is. Just to give you an idea of the beginning of today's walk. We've come up the steepest hill, I think, that walking the course has encountered thus far. You can see Windermere in the background. It's gorgeous. I feel like we're in the jungle, though. Onwards and upwards. That's a moderately harsh start to the day. Climbed about 500 feet in 790 yards of walking. No wonder I feel knackered. We're at the top. Hooray. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> recording. You didn't get the planes? I think I got the end of them. Oh, bloody hell. I mean, standing up here having a Kit Kat, putting sun cream on, and three RAF jets flying up Lake Windermere. I promise you Under they were us. lower than we were. <laughs> I mean, oh my god, and I didn't have my bloody camera. But hopefully Minty got it on there. <laughs> I might have been too late. We now find ourselves about ten and a half miles in on the day. And uh, having just stopped for a bit of a break, looked at the sat-nav. Uh, we know that we're 
going to be climbing over the next four miles to a height of getting on for 1800 feet I think we've got something called Snake Pass coming up and High Stones Point sort of sounds as if there's some quite heavy climbing coming on and when you look at the vista directly ahead of us you can sort of see why God knows which way we're going somewhere <laughs> we're going over the top of that lot Aha. we're in a bowl of mountains and the only way to get past them is to go over them so over we go <laughs> straight over the top of one of those hooray Well, this is some view. Having got to the top of Snake Pass, I'm now looking down Stake Pass. That's S-T-A-K-E. Although I've got to say at the end of this, I think we'll have earned an S-T-E-A-K. It's just after 7.30 on day two of leg 31. We've done about 25 and a bit miles. We've got about a mile and a half to go. Light's starting to go. Uh, but we're parked, well we're not parked, we're standing on literally on the side of Derwent Water. We've got about, as I say, a mile and a half to go. We've had the most amazing day, we've seen some incredible things. Um, I mean really amazing scenery, extraordinary scenery. Uh, we saw three RAF jets fly up the length of Lake Windermere at a height literally below us. It was absolutely astonishing when we were up on the top looking down. Uh, we've seen a red squirrel, Minty saw a red squirrel about half an hour ago, which we were able to sort of follow as it jumped from tree to tree. And neither of us have ever, ever seen a red squirrel. So that was a, that was a massive thrill. I hope we got some great photos of it. Uh, we've had a fantastic day. We really have. Um, feet are a bit sore, uh, but otherwise we're in great shape. Uh, mile and a half to go. Walk on. Leg 31, day three. Uh, has dawned, well at least where I am, a very bright sunny cloudless sky, woke up actually to fog at uh, Tom and Annie's um, house where we've been staying, uh, but it's absolutely glorious here, um, it's going to be another warm day, bit of a breeze, um, not as far to walk today but it'll be spectacular I think, you probably see the hills behind me, somewhere over there is where I'm heading. Uh, having yesterday scaled about 1,600 feet, I think the peak today is at about 2,200 feet. Uh, it appears though that most of the climbing is in the very early stages and thereafter it's downhill and pretty flat most of the way to Carlisle. Probably going to be doing about 20 miles today. Um, so uh, for the time being it's a uh, walk on. As if today might be rather after the Lord Mayor's show but as you can see I'm about five miles into today's walking. Already up pretty high, done most of the climbing for the day, and just look at this view. I mean, it is absolutely astounding. Glorious. I'm now at uh, just over a thousand feet up. It's just after midday, I'm about ten and a half miles in, and um, the last big climb, I think, of this leg is just ahead of me. I've got about a thousand, just over a thousand feet to climb in the next uh, mile and a half, as you can see behind me. I know how much film flattens country, I can assure you it's a bloody steep hill. Anyway, it's my last big climb, walk on. Here's my reward for climbing up to just over 2,000 feet. An absolutely astounding view on a completely clear day. I cannot imagine how many miles you can see for up here. It's a hugely long way. It is a staggeringly beautiful place. Three finished. Uh, as am I, practically. I honestly can say that I have not felt like this at any stage in the last 31 legs, 1350 miles or whatever it is, my feet feel absolutely completely shot to bits, shot to ribbons, knackered actually. I suspect it's probably just the hills that have caught up. In the last three days we've done 14 and a half, 42 and a half, I've done just under 69 miles in two and a bit days, climbed best part, well in the last two days, climbed 11,000 feet, really really feeling it, I honestly have not felt like this since I started, I'm very very glad I've got just three miles to do tomorrow, I'm very 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 glad that I've got four or five days off before the leg, 105 mile leg from Carlisle to Air Stars, which I'm, if I'm really honest I'm not particularly looking forward to, but you know, this is, we always knew this was going to be the guts of the project and this is the guts of it and um, we'll get it done but it's um, 
I hope it doesn't get more difficult than this because it's I feel absolutely mullered. Leg 31, day four. I uh, just come to finish up the last few miles uh, back in the village of Buckerbank. Feeling a lot livelier than I was when I was last here last night, when I was feeling frankly absolutely completely cooked. Um, had a pretty quiet evening, was in bed by 10, uh, dosed up with ibuprofen, uh, feel a lot sharper this morning. Nonetheless, I'm still pretty glad it's only sort of four miles or so to go to Carlisle. Already thinking ahead to air next week and a weather forecast which at this stage looks absolutely dreadful. So we'll see what, um, we'll see how that develops. Uh, but for the time being, and for about four miles, it's walk on. Leg 31, Cartmel to Carlisle. Unquestionably the most scenic, unquestionably the most physically demanding, is now complete. <laughs>